are back in our holy throne for another stand up special Tuesday. You know, I said I was going to keep this going and I was not lying. So let's go ahead and uh, get down to business. Welcome back to Eddie B TV. I am, of course, Eddie B. Nice to see y'all. And we are back at you again today for another reaction video. And uh, today, on this uh, Stand Up Special Tuesday, we're gonna get into another new one, another full special. And uh, I've broken it down to four parts, uh, as best as I possibly could. You know, I might run into some hiccups here and there when it comes to where I stop at that, but hey, man, hey, hey, hey. It's not an exact science, man. I'm trying my best here. So yeah, man, we're gonna get into a full special today. And this one is gonna be from Bobby Slayton today. All right. Well, you know what? Um, within the last week, you know, I was going through um, with some people I know some uh, videos that I had done because they were interested in what I was doing here. And uh, I played the Patrice O'Neal uh, Nasty Show clip for him, right? And then I saw something that, that just told me to keep it in my head. It was the beginning when uh, Patrice was kind of, you know, babbling a little bit with mumbling and he was talking about uh, this guy here, Bobby Slayton, because I guess he's the one who introduced him on this on that particular set he was doing at the Nasty Show. So I, I looked his name up and I found this special and uh, fortunately for me, it was uploaded pretty recently, you know, not too long ago. And uh, I just wanted to see what it was all about and uh, here we gonna do it, man. This one is gonna be titled Born To Be Bobby. All right, well, hey, man. I imagine uh, that is very true. You know, your parents named you Bobby, so you were definitely born to be that. But uh, I know he's going to be talking about some other stuff at the very least. So, yeah, we're going to figure out what he's talking about. So let's go ahead and get into part one, shall we? Bobby Slayton with uh, Born to Be Bobby, part one of this. As I said, I've broken it down to four parts. And if you like this reaction, please like, comment, and subscribe, B-Boy. Keep everything going. All right. So, uh, yeah, man, I said that I was going to do this, you know, uh, a new special every Tuesday until it runs out. I start a new one. Um, there was a couple other ones that I had in mind to do, but I, I kind of ran into a couple of copyright problems and, uh, you know, things just wouldn't like uh, get uploaded for me the way that I would have liked. A lot of confusion, but I was able to get this one up and uh, I still plan on getting to more in the future. But, you know, this one is the one that actually worked for me. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Bobby Slayton with Born to Be Bobby, part one, right here on Eddie BTV, stand up special day, Tuesday. Let's have some fun. All right. Let's get situated with this one here. And here, hold on. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a hiccup there. Here we go. Full of comedy. And I'm getting ready to shoot my special tonight called Born to Be Bobby. So what do I do in preparation for my new tremendous comedy special? Getting a tattoo. It says Born to Be Bobby right on my back. You don't see a lot of comedians making that kind of commitment. They do a special, do you? No. And you know what? I've caused a lot of people pain over the years with my jokes. I've broken up couples. I made bachelorettes cry. So right now, I want to share some of that responsibility and take the pain away. This is going to be a great, great special. God, this tattoo hurts so much. Damn. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Bobby Slayton! Let's not get started on the wrong foot. To be honest with you, that was a lot more than I expected. I, I appreciate it, but obviously you people don't get out much, do you? <laughs> you know, I, I gotta tell you something before we start this thing. You know, I've been living in Vegas now for a couple of years. I just left, I've been traveling on the road, I'm bringing the comedy uh, to the people. And, and I just started getting back out there to the comedy clubs. And I honestly believe, and maybe I'm being naive here, I just really believe that the government is doing everything they can since 9-11 to make airline travel safe for us. So here's the thing. I'm flying home yesterday, back here to Southern California. I'm at the airport waiting to go through security. Okay. There's an elderly Asian couple in front of me. They're really cute. They're like 80, 90 years old. I don't know if they were Chinese or Japanese. Maybe they were just tired, but they looked Asian. I, I don't know. I'm just saying. That's cold. They were tired. And they're, and they're really cute. They're walking like old people, you know, where it looks like they bought their shoes on one of those discount uh, pay less places and they forgot to cut the plastic thing, holding them together. Okay. Oh, boy. So we get to the security checkpoint 
And I guess these poor old people don't know that cosmetic, toiletry, gel, liquid law, which almost, you're all familiar with. I don't need to tell you that when you fly, you can't carry shampoo. If it's over six ounces, you gotta claim it, put it in your fucking shoe with the computer. Okay, you know the drill. <laughs> yeah, so these sucks. poor old people don't know the drill, and they're taking all their stuff away. And it's amazing to me, though, when you fly, and I'm sure there's a reason for it, that when you get on a plane, and go through security, you can't have shampoo or conditioner, shaving cream, deodorant, or toothpaste. Every goddamn thing that terrorists probably don't use, <laughs> we can't have. Right? Now, yeah, that's funny, right? <laughs> I look at the next security line, and these two big nosed Arab looking pricks psh, right through security. And if there's Muslim people here, I mean that in, in, in the nicest way. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I say to security, look, I know you guys are just doing your job, but what are you doing to the elderly Asian people? Why don't you get the two big-nosed Arab-looking guys? And they say, sir, we can't do that. That's racial profiling. I said, I know. That's my point. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying the Arab-looking gentlemen are going to blow up the plane, but look around. If anybody's going to do it, it's those two motherfuckers! <laughs> not the elderly Asian uh, grandma. That's all I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Elderly Asian people do not need to be detained at security. Now, at the DMV, that's a different story. Oh. I, now, <laughs> you know, Classics, right? I didn't want to open up with that joke. I know it's a stereotype, but how many Asian race car drivers can you name? That's a man. Oh, that's a good point. Arab men, on the other hand, know how to drive. They'll take a truck full of explosives, go through a barricade, and blow up a fucking embassy or an army base. They know how to drive. Asian people don't. Now. Oh, man. Anyway, so, so like I said, so I've been in Vegas now for two years, and I, it, it's interesting, so I'm sure you've all been to Vegas, the entertainment capital of the country. Never it's been also to the Vegas. honeymoon capital of the country. What's amazing, though, is they don't tell you it, it's also uh, the suicide capital, and last year it was voted the fattest uh, city in America. Now, mm. what I understand is why it's the suicide capital. It's also the honeymoon capital, so there's got to be a correlation. <laughs> I'm just saying, you go to Vegas and you wake up with a wife and a hangover and no fucking money, and then you wonder why the windows don't open all the way. Okay, but, oh, man. But anyway, my point is, it's the fattest oh. city in America. What's amazing is we're not the fattest country. And it's so funny how Americans, you see these articles all the time, how obsessed we are with weight. And Oprah Winfrey and Dr. Phil and Time and Newsweek, there's always cover stories about celebrity diets and fad diets and magic pills you can take and how to diet, how to lose weight. But like I said, we're not the fattest country. The fattest country, the blonde, you know? It's a great way to start a show about me. Ask the blonde the question. <laughs> Sorry. It's like talking to a chicken. <laughs> and I don't, no, I, and don't take stereotype. them the wrong way. I love blondes. I nailed a lot of blondes before I got married. All you need is a shiny object to distract them for a second. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm sorry, I've given you time. Okay, the fattest, um. the fattest country, and by the way, we're taping this to television, but if you say something stupid, we'll cut it out. Oh, can, can you just, don't help her, can you just name a country? Just name another country. Germany, a uh, good guess, but you're wrong. It's not the fattest country. A lot of fat people there, though. The fattest country <laughs> is Mexico. The second fattest country, the United States. You know why? Too many fucking Mexicans. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> Stop it. No. Oh, man. You know, by laughing at this crap, you're only encouraging uh, me. This is your fault as much as mine. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, I want to say something else. You know, when they introduced me, they, say, they call me the pit bull of comedy. It's a little name I've had for many years. For maybe 25 years, he's Bobby Slayton, the pit bull of comedy. And I wanted to call the special, you know, the pit bull attack. So the pit bull bites back, the pit bull unleashed. My manager, my wife, and a lot of people close to me said, Bobby, you got to stop with this pit bull thing. Because what happens is people, you know, are afraid to come to your show. They don't want to sit in the front row. They think you're going to be aggressive and attack people. And I don't do that. Occasionally, I'll talk to somebody in the front row who needs my help and they don't listen because they're retarded, and I yell at them, and it appears that I'm attacking. <laughs> but you know what's interesting? They found out that pit bulls over the years, and I said this from day one, you know, pit bulls really are the nicest animals in the world. And we found out when that asshole Michael Vick went to prison a couple of years ago. Uh, what did we find out? Vic. That pit bulls, when they're rehabilitated, they're not vicious animals. It's when they're treated that way, okay? And they take pit bulls, it's when they're shit on, and fucked with, and beaten, and neglected, more about my marriage later. What happens? <laughs> no, no, but you know what, though? I think most of you married guys understand that. I think most of you married guys are like pit bulls. Uh, you know, and you're really nice until your wife gets a hold of you. Your wife's like Michael Vick, Michael Vagina. She has... Yes. Damn. 
I should have been a doctor or a school teacher. I'm throwing my life away with this comedy shit. I'm too much to offer the world. A missionary, a politician, uh, something to help people. What I'm saying is, if you look at married people, are you two married? I see you talking to her. Are you married? Okay, how long have you been married? It's 10 years, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. You're married 10 years. I'm married 21 years. With a Winchell factor, it's like a, a thousand. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> What I'm saying, and I'll say this on television, uh, that I'm sure that your wife has said to you, how nice of a guy, when, you, when she met you, you were a great guy, and now you're a fucking asshole. You've heard that in one form or another. <laughs> exactly, yeah. thank you, the doctor is in. I'm not the pit bull, I'm the doctor of comedy. All right, doc. I'm paying attention, man. Diagnose me. What I'm saying is that, that you know, and again, you guys in a long-term relationship has heard this in, in, in one way, that, that basically, oh, you were such a nice guy when I met you. Remember when I met you? You were so nice. You know, you were nice to me all the time. Okay, so I was nice when I met you, and now I'm a fucking asshole. I was nice my whole life until you came into my life, and you had nothing to do with this. Yeah, yeah. Ladies, take some responsibility Women, I'm not blaming you, but can you take half the responsibility? That, Partial yes, blame? Yes, thank you. You know, again, I'll say it one more time. Just Every little. married guy's heard that. When I met you, you were so nice. You would take me dancing, we'd have sex all the time, you'd tuck in your shirt, you'd buy me gifts. Remember when I met you? You remember when you were a new pussy? <laughs> I think it was the same week. <laughs> Coincidence, perhaps. <laughs> Yeah. You see, here's the thing, too, all right? Um, and I'm really getting tired of comedians doing you know, the difference between men and women in marriage. And I want to get this out of the way so I can actually start my official uh, part of the show. But here's the thing, okay. is that marriage is a job. And women don't tell you that until after you're married. You find out you have to work on this. I didn't know I had to work on this. I, I didn't know it was going to be a job. And I'll tell you one more time, I love my wife. I don't cheat on her, married 21 years. But I didn't know that marriage was going to be a job. And you hear it in women's magazines and men's magazines, from, from Dr. Phil, from Dr. Ruth, from Oprah Winfrey. It's a job. Well, what kind of job is this? There's no paycheck. There's no vacation. No. The more time I put in, the less benefits I seem to get. True. True. And God forbid you just look at pussy. I'm not talking about cheating, I'm talking about looking. What are you looking at? I'm thinking about a second job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to put in that overtime, man. I am trying to keep this family together in this economy and I get no appreciation whatsoever. Oh, Bobby. You know what it is, though? You know, my wife said to me when I was uh, getting ready to tape this show, my wife said to me, you know, on your last couple of CDs, you do all these jokes about women and all these stereotypes about women. Are you going to do that on your new Showtime special? And I said, you know what? The jokes I do about women may be stereotypes, but they're based on you, and they're all fucking true. Okay, okay. And you know what, though? It bothers me when you watch minority comics, and I guess, you know, women comics and Mexican comics, you know, you deserve your, your day, but what I'm saying is, you watch any Mexican comic, or a black comic, or a woman comic, or a gay comic, or, or, or Kathy Griffin, and, and <laughs> not, I don't even know what that meant. I like Kathy Griffin. But, but you laugh, that's all that matters. <laughs> but I'm saying the F word, the N word, the C word, and you can do whatever you want. The other, way, the other day I'm watching a television and this woman comic comes on one of the talk shows, very funny lady, I don't remember who it was, and she does a joke that I've seen many women comics do about how men, when they drive, never ask for directions. And it's an old mm -hmm. joke and it's a stupid, but women are laughing already. And because women always talk about this, that men never ask, you ever notice ladies, and men never ask for directions? And you think it's so fucking funny. Now, okay, now. <laughs> okay. Go see Kathy Griffin, shut up. <laughs> but this is why it bothers me. Because you're doing jokes about men and their stereotypes that have no basis in reality, okay? The reason men never ask the directions, girls, because if you're in the car, chances are we're going someplace we don't want to fucking get to. That's real. It's as That's simple real. as that. <laughs> Believe me, I got World Series, U2 tickets, tickets to the Stones. You know, I know exactly how to get there. I got it mapped out a week in advance like a bank heist. I know exactly what to do. Yes. Where to pee, where to park, how to get in, how to get out. I know what I'm doing. True. I'm going to your mother's house for Christmas. Fuck, we missed the exit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, we'll see her next yes. year. By the time I turn around, Thanksgiving's in 11 months. Relax, I'm going home. Oh, man, that is hilarious. You know, and, and it's funny, too, because, you know, when you watch movies, the other night I'm watching the classic movie channel, and for, Titanic comes on, which I never knew was a classic oh. movie, but I guess... I, I, it was a great movie, but if you watch these classic movie channels, it sometimes amazes me what a classic movie is. Titanic, I understand, won Academy Awards. Weekend of Bernie's, you know, Porky's 2. I don't know, whatever. 
So the other day I'm watching this, and it's so funny how they smoke cigarettes in movies, and then they blame Hollywood when kids start to smoke, and they blame rappers when kids get a gun, and they shoot their parents. And You know, it, they're always blaming Hollywood and movies and TV shows and music, but they never blame Hollywood for all this romantic bullshit. So the other night, I'm watching TV, uh. Titanic comes on. I'm in bed with my wife, and you remember the film Titanic. And the end of the movie, my wife says to me, you know, you're nothing like that. Nothing oh, like man. what? Well, I'm not going to sit in the ocean with my balls turning blue while, you, while your fat ass is on a raft and Celine Dion is singing in the background? This never happened. Oh, no. It's bullshit made up by Hollywood. Yeah, that's true, too. Oh, man. The next night, I'm watching TV and another movie comes on, The Hand, The Rock's a Cradle, one of the most romantic movies I have ever seen. Now... See, I knew you'd laugh when, you, when I said that, and I really don't know why you're laughing. If you remember the film, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, it's about this hot babysitter who wants to fuck the husband, kill the wife, and watch the kids. You can't find that kind of help today for $4 an hour. I'm saying... And you know what it is? I'll tell you what it is. It's that you ladies are so busy trying to figure shit out. It's amazing to me. And I hate to tread on ground that other comedians have done, but here, here it is, the, here's the bottom line. The women are looking for answers. That's why there's a Lifetime Network, and that's why you have the Romance Channel, and you have soap operas, and you have Dr. Phil, and you have, you know, Cosmo Magazine, and you have Oprah Winfrey, and you have The View, and Meta from Mars, and all your fucking self-help books. You're looking for shit that's basically not there. Men never talk yeah. to you. Guys never share their feelings. I don't have any feelings to share. Men don't hide their feelings. I have two feelings. I'm horny or I'm hungry. That's all I have. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I tell my wife. Sweetheart, look at me right now. If I don't have a boner, make me a sandwich. <laughs> what are you looking for? Oh. <laughs> I told you I should have been a doctor. I have all these fucking answers. You know, my husband house, ever talks man. to me. You ever stop and think maybe your husband has nothing to say? That's why man invented the telephone. You want to talk? Go talk. That's why I have a TV. I have a TV. You go talk. We'll meet halfway. We'll have dinner. We'll decide who takes the kids to school. And then you go your separate way. That's why my marriage has been great for the last five years. I've been in Vegas. I don't see my wife six days out of the week. I come on one day to see my dog. I pretend I want to see my wife. And it's fucking great. <laughs> It's always oh, with the talking man. ladies, you know? <laughs> and it's amazing to me. Like, every night my wife will call me, how was your show? The show was great. I'm on the road, what are you doing? Uh, I'm watching Letterman. Then she'll call me the next day, what are you doing? You know, I'm in some shitty little city. I'm, not, I'm, I'm at the mall, I'm walking around, I'm jacking off, I'm taking a nap. <laughs> That's my day. Sometimes they take a nap, then I watch Letterman, then I jack off, I, I switch it up. <laughs> okay. You know, in, in case I'm getting followed, you don't want to do the same thing every day. Okay, yeah, that's true. The spies are after us, guys. <laughs> It's like talking after sex. After sex, can I just watch TV or take a leak or make a sandwich or walk the dog or brush my teeth? And I can't do anything because after I nail my wife, she won't let it go. She's wrapped around me I'm like a goddamn mental patient on a ride. Get the fuck, get off. Ride's over, disappear. Get off. <laughs> you never talk to me after sex. I know, I talked to you before sex. Uh. That's why I talk to you at all, is to get sex. My plan worked. <laughs> Land Why should I keep talking to you? Do runners keep running once they cross the finish line? No! Uh, okay, okay. I'll go ahead and stop it right there uh, for part one, y'all. All right. Woo! Yeah, it's about an hour and a few minutes, so I figure, you know... 15 plus minutes a piece, man, seems right up my alley. And, uh, you know, a nice little applause break right there. So I figured, yeah, perfect time to stop it. All right, y'all, man, that was uh, Bobby Slayton. I uh, was born to beat Bobby, and uh, it's going to be part one of this one. Woo, man, okay. I think that was uh, definitely worth the, uh, uh, worth the choice so far, you know, when you guys agree. Uh, let's go ahead and unpack a little bit so far. Um... Man, how do you start the special? Sometimes when there's a lot of uh, minutes in the piece that I'm doing, I forget about certain things that were said. I know some of y'all will be okay with that because, you know, Eddie B ain't yapping too much. Hey, man, but I'll try. I'll try to remember. And if uh, I forget things, I'm sure some of y'all will be happy. Um, let me see. Uh, how did he start the whole thing? Uh, the airline thing. 
Now, I've done a clip with George Carlin when he talks about uh, the airline's announcements and all that stuff, but it's a little bit of a different feel here. You know, it, it can be a little bit um, annoying to deal with, you know, some of the new regulations and all that, but for the most part, it's really not that bad. You know, it's no different from uh, making sure you're up early enough to go to work. You know what I mean? Just make sure you're up early enough. You know, you can't do the same things that you did on the airlines back in the 80s and 90s or whatever. You know, just bite the bullet on that one. I know it's a pain in the ass, but hey, you know what I mean? What are we going to do? It's not like we could change anything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a funny way you described that one. <clears throat> Talk about all the stuff that Arabs don't use. Oh man, the stuff that we can't take on planes. You know, that was a funny joke, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, so that was a funny one, so I'll leave the airlines alone. And um, <clears throat> what else? He was talking about uh, Vegas. Now, I've never been to Vegas before. For some reason, I have a complex about going to Vegas. I know it's probably kind of stupid, you know, but uh, uh, Television and movies sometimes influence me to do things or not do things, you know what I mean? And going to Vegas is one of those things, man. I always felt like if I was ever going to go to Vegas, I would have to be single, first of all. That is a must right there because, you know, and I'm not going to go... <clears throat> And I'm not gonna go with uh, with a, a woman, you know, that I'm with. Why the hell would I do that for, man? That takes all the fun out of it. Unless your wife is uh, really, really fun, or your girlfriend is really fun, and uh, she'll know that, you know, if you're in Vegas, it's time to have some damn fun, you know, whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, that kind of attitude. But uh, I don't see that happening with someone like me. <laughs> I don't have that kind of luck. But um, other than that, he did say that uh, Vegas is the, um, is the fattest city in the country, you know? But America's not the fattest uh, country in the world. Mexico is, and we're number two because of all the Mexicans. <laughs> That's cold, man. I don't know if it's like um, a culture thing that some cultures might, you know, put on more weight for certain reasons than other cultures. I don't know what the correlation is between that, but you know, maybe I might have to do some research. If any uh, medical experts are out there, please let me know about that. Uh, but um, other than that, uh, what else was he talking about, man? You know, uh, relationships. Oh my goodness. You know, I, I don't really, um, I don't want to get too depressing or too like, you know, <clears throat> like uh, misogynistic or nothing like that, even though a little bit of that is in me. And some misandry is in some of y'all ladies as well, man. I know you don't hear that word too often because, you know, <laughs> women are so great and we're so trash. Nah, we're pretty much half and half on that. There's some trash women out there. But, um, yeah, man, it, it's funny how it, uh, it it always works when it comes to uh, uh, relationships. You know, like I've always said, you know what I mean, on this one, man, it's like no dude wants to be with just one woman sexually. Just sexually now. All the other ways, you know what I mean? I don't want to be bothered with any other women because I don't want to take on too many personalities like that. But sexually, it's just the one thing, you know what I mean? And that's the one thing about how he said that... Um, Oh, God, you were such an asshole when I, uh, you're such an asshole now, but you were so nice when I met you because, yeah, man, it's it's not just us that's assholes, you know? When you're with somebody for a long period of time, man, there's no real excitement anymore, you know? There's no, um, you know, anticipation of things, feeling new and, and special and exciting and all that because time has gone by. It's not a matter of it being anybody's fault. It's just what is. Like I always keep saying, everybody always tries to fight things that are natural because they're afraid of what natural will take them to, but everyone always says, just let nature take its course. And I'm like, ugh, do you know what the hell that means? Ugh, goodness. But, um, yeah, man, even my lady self sometimes tells me that I'm kind of an ass, you know what I mean? But the thing about me is, is that I've been the same person every single day since we met, you know what I mean? And I know that probably doesn't, you know, create for a lot of excitement in the, uh, in the minds and eyes of some ladies. But you know what, man, I just figure there's no sense in being some phony version of yourself. You know, when it's all going to come busting out, you know, months or years into the relationship and then all of a sudden you guys are fighting about it, then it could ultimately lead to your breakup. You know what I mean? It's, I've seen it happen all over the place. And uh, when it comes to that, ladies, fellas, accept people for who they are, man, or get the hell away, man, because you knew what you signed up for. Unpredictability. That's what all relationships are. You know what I mean? There's nothing more to say about that. Um, as far as the other stuff that he was saying is, it's just like, yeah, man, it's like, 
and like it's another thing that it's not a matter of fault. It's just what is. Everyone tries to declare men as insensitive and all that and all. But it's just we're just us. You guys are just you. You guys like what you like. We like what we like. You know. And uh, me, I'm not too big on cuddling after sex. You know what I mean? To be honest with you, sometimes you know it'll happen. You know because sometimes that's where my brain will go and things just happen. You know what I mean? It's fine. But for the most part, yeah, I just want to you know. <laughs> move on to the next thing, you know what I mean? Uh, get cleaned up, you know what I mean? Get something to eat, you know, watch a little TV. But you know, man, it's like stereotypical, you know, statements made about women because they're true. And some things about men are true as well, but not so much that you'll, you know, that you'll like actually see it and how we act on a regular basis. Like me, I have a lot of feelings, but the things are is that I don't feel like expressing a lot of them because a lot of them could lead to an even bigger argument. And I, it's not a matter of being phony or nothing like that. It's just that when my lady sometimes looks at me and goes, hey, babe, what was that look for? What were you thinking about? I'm like, don't analyze me <laughs> because you're not going to understand what I'm saying. And the things that I'm going to say to try to help you understand, you're not going to like. You're going to take it as an attack towards you. And it probably has nothing to do with you because women are twisted like that a little bit. You know, men are twisted in ways, too, but just different from the ladies, you know, and it's not any better or worse, just different. But uh, yeah, man, it's just um, talking about the Titanic, though. I mean, I like the movie because, you know, it talks about a very tragic time in history, you know, because it is a true story about what happened on the Titanic. But it's like the way like a lot of women try to pass that off as a love story is very insulting and uh, very not fair. You know, they only knew each other all of a few days. You know what I mean? And uh, she's a um, she's a privileged rich girl who doesn't like the life and all that. And he's a homeless dude who kind of just like, you know, a street rat like Aladdin or something like that. You know, you know, in a weird way, it was kind of like Aladdin a little bit, just took place on a ship, you know what I mean? But other than that, man, you know, it's not a love story, man. It was just a chance encounter, you know, that led to the uh, the ship, you know, getting hit, um, hitting the ship, hitting the iceberg, and then a lot of people dying, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, man, it's just like, ladies' definition of romance is like very, very off, you know what I mean? And not because you guys are off, it's like what you've been taught to believe and all these things, the magazines and all the shows that you guys watch. I mean, men are influenced by things too, man, but geez, not so much as the ladies, man. And uh, don't get it twisted, man. What, what, what we get into as uh, the fellas and the ladies, man, it affects us for the good and the negative, you know, but we got to pick it apart in a good way and just uh, hopefully we come out with a good outcome, you know, at least that's how my experiences have gone. But uh, other than that, man, yes, <laughs> that's why I talk to you to get sex and then afterwards I'm done. We don't run after we cross the finish line. <laughs> That was hella funny, man. But yeah, man, I got a few more parts to go with this one, and hopefully they're just as funny, man. But I'm going to go ahead and cut it off right there. One more time, uh, Bobby Slayton uh, with uh, Born to be Bobby, part one of this comedy special that we're getting into. And if you like that reaction, please like, comment, and subscribe to your boy. Keep everything going, like I always say. So uh, yeah, man, uh, I think I got into enough, you know, of my unpacking with it, you know. If, uh, if I missed a couple of things, I'm sure some of y'all are pretty pleased about that. Ugh, I know. I still get some comments here and there when people are talking about, wow, you, their, your intro took so long. It's like, yeah, you know, I get in my mode and I start yapping a little bit. That's what you got the mouse or your little thumbs or fingers for to skip ahead to the reaction if you want to do that. You know, as long as you're not clowning me and being all insulting, I don't even care if you leave the comment at all. But, you know, just uh, understand that there's ways around that without having to leave a comment. Just letting you know. But please. Do what you please. Just don't talk no trash so I don't, so I don't have to delete your comment or nothing like that. All right, man. This is going to be Eddie BTV signing off one more again here. Uh, part one of this stand-up comedy special from Bobby Slayton. Um, <laughs> you know, he is a really funny dude, man. You know, as far as a pit bull of comedy uh, term, you know what I mean? I, I'd say it's fairly accurate so far. He says a lot of things. Uh, that a lot of guys feel but don't express, you know what I mean? And uh, he's like, uh, like you say, he's the doctor of uh, of comedy, you know what I mean? You know, yeah, you know, the doctor is in, you know what I mean? Let me know what's going on. Tell me what's wrong, man. What kind of medication do I need? Oh, my goodness. Uh, but, yeah, man, this is a very funny uh, start to this special right here, man. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to the last few parts of it. So, yeah, thank you all for tuning in one more time to this one, man. Uh, I had a lot of fun with it. And, uh, you know, it's I can only imagine uh, what the last um, three parts are going to bring me. You know, he started off pretty heavy, you know, and he talks kind of fast. He gets into a lot of subjects uh, very quickly. But uh, no denying he's funny as hell. 
And uh, if you guys got any other uh, clips from Bobby Slayton that are out there that you guys like or whatever, please leave them to me in the comments. Um, I'll check it out uh, and see if, um, you know, it's uh, worthy to get to, you know. Sometimes, um, you know, the thumbnail will give me something to look forward to. Sometimes the title, you know. You know other times just... Uh, just overall curiosity. So yeah, one more time, thank y'all for tuning in, like I said, and um, until next reaction, love and appreciate y'all. Peace.